Welcome to this WebEx session. I'm, I'm, I'm Omar Rafi. I'm a senior product manager here in WebEx. And today with my colleague, Phil Belanti, we're going to walk you through how to leverage WebEx developer products to build cross-platform applications. Let's start first with our goal here in WebEx. Here in WebEx for developers, we want to expose our WebEx platform powerful features to our third-party developers through different integration channels that allow them to build cross-platform application that simplify workflow, reduce context switching, and allow for hybrid work. We have a variety of offerings today. We have bots, widgets, SDKs, and APIs, as well as integration. With that being said, I would like to hand it over to my colleague, Phil, who's going to provide you more details on some of these offerings. Thank you, Omar. My name is Phil Belanti, and I'm a senior developer evangelist for the WebEx platform. Let's jump right in and talk about the most basic and common type of WebEx application, and that's a bot. Bots are used to connect members of a messaging space with an external service. When a bot is a member of a space, it can be listening for commands from users to perform tasks, or it can be delivering notifications from events in other apps. Bots are essentially just users in the middle, bringing content from other services to WebEx or sending content from WebEx to another app. The direction depends on where you need to get your work done. Having a bot deliver real-time notifications or alerts that you can respond to in WebEx allows you to optimize your workflow by keeping you in the place where you quickly can communicate with your team. A bot is a lot like a regular user in that it has its own identity within WebEx. Users can message a bot directly or add them to a group space for all members to interact with. Bots do have a special badge added to their avatar in WebEx client, indicating to users they're interacting with a bot instead of a human. Another key point about WebEx bots is they only have permissions to perform tasks using the messaging APIs. Bots can't, for example, schedule meetings, make calls, or generally act on behalf of other users. Because bot applications have these limited capabilities, the WebEx developer portal makes it very easy for developers to create a bot and get the API token necessary to build one. Since it's simple to create a bot and they only use a limited and straightforward set of APIs, they are generally considered the easiest type of WebEx application to build. Building bots is a great way for developers to start becoming familiar with WebEx extensibility as they have a very low barrier to entry. Now let's highlight an example messaging bot that is really handy, and it can be found in the uh, WebEx App Hub, and that's the Twitter bot for WebEx. So this bot solves the problem of context switching, having to jump back and forth between two apps to get the information that you need. The Twitter bot can bring real-time tweets from accounts that you follow into a WebEx space. The bot can also set up custom notifications for tweets shared by specific users or include specific hashtags. It can even notify users of direct messages and reply to tweets right from WebEx, which means you'll never have to leave WebEx to keep up with Twitter. The WebEx APIs are RESTful, utilizing standard HTTP methods that developers love. Get, post, put, delete, and they're each represented here in this slide by the color above each endpoint in this matrix. Each column represents most of the WebEx messaging APIs that bots are essentially limited to. So for example, you may want to have your bot application create a new message in a space. As you can see in the messages column, that will require an HTTP post. When you create a bot account on the developer portal, the WebEx platform will issue a bot authorization token, and that's very important. While any WebEx user can access the APIs, the WebEx platform has to authenticate each API request to ensure the application has the proper rights to perform the action. It does so through a header called authorization that contains a bearer token, which both identifies and authenticates the bot before an API call can operate. So WebEx not only checks for the bearer token that it's valid, but it also has to determine if the API request is allowed at all. So for example, if a bot tries to create a message in a WebEx space that's not a member of yet, WebEx would re reject the post request as unauthorized. So besides the headers, the, this example shows uh, the API call a bot application uses to create a message inside a WebEx space. So first, it sends a JSON document to the messages API 
that contains the room ID of the space that the message could go to, along with the content of the message. So the APA responds with a document indicating an ID for the message, the ID of the space it was created in, the destination space type, the content of the text, and the timestamp. So as we saw in the example bots from the WebEx App Hub, a great feature for messaging apps is buttons and cards. So buttons and cards adds a graphical user interface to WebEx messages, so users can interact with your app in more intuitive ways. So for example, instead of a bot collecting information from users through tedious amounts of questions over regular text, they can present a web form to collect all the data from the user in one step. So WebEx applications can add cards to WebEx messaging spaces by including a card attachment when posting a message. Card attachments use Microsoft's adaptive card specification that was open source, and that's what defines the content of the card. The WebEx clients render the cards with the same look and feel across any platform. So whether you're on a desktop or Android or iOS, and that allows you to put more focus on the content and the interaction, you know, instead of the UI and the UX. Now, if the app you're creating needs to perform tasks outside the scope of messaging, such as creating meetings, accessing WebEx devices, or performing administrative tasks, Instead of a bot, you're going to need to create an integration in order to obtain the appropriate authorization credentials to access these more powerful interfaces. To a WebEx user, an integration is a lot like an assistant. Once they connect an integration to your WebEx account, it can perform actions on your behalf. Integrations are applications that enhance a user's WebEx account. Because integrations can be very powerful, the authorization is a bit more challenging. Integration apps need to obtain permission from each end user. And the access token is issued through an OAuth grant flow, and that's an open standard as well. The level of access for integration applications are specified in the scopes, which are configured by the developer at the time that the integration was created. The scopes that were pre-configured by the developer are presented by the app to the end users of the integration asking for permission to their account, as shown in the illustration in this slide. So here are just a few WebEx APIs that integration applications can utilize. Please note that the accessibility of these APIs in this matrix may be dependent on the level of WebEx licensing that you have. But as you can see, integrations can leverage APIs to automate the management of meetings, recordings, WebEx devices, and even the workspaces that the devices are located. There are many WebEx APIs that are available for integra uh, integrations for things such as call controls and WebEx calling and administrator APIs to automate actions that are usually done in WebEx Control Hub. These APIs are not available to bots and integration is the only way. Now I'd like to highlight a great example of WebEx integration and this is from our wonderful partner, Calendly. Calendly is the scheduling platform for high-performing teams. Calendly streamlines teams, participants, and data for faster, better connections. This integration leverages the WebEx Meetings APIs in very intuitive ways that allows Calendly users to authorize and connect their WebEx accounts to schedule, manage, and quickly retrieve meeting details. This kind of functionality is classic use case of the Meetings APIs and Calendly put together in a really neat way. Now let's hand it off to Omar to talk about other integrations, including WebEx SDKs and widgets. Omar? Thanks, Phil. Now let me walk you through our widgets and SDKs. Here in WebEx, we offer a variety of SDKs and widgets that provide the core collaboration features as messaging, meeting, screen sharing, and more. If you want to leverage these features, while still being in control of the user experience and user interface, SDKs are the right products for you. We offer a variety of SDKs, like Web SDK, which can be embedded to your web-based application, either running on mobile browser or desktop browser and written in JavaScript. We also offer iOS and Android SDK, iOS SDK written in Swift, while Android written in Kotlin, if you want to integrate the WebEx features into your native mobile applications. If you want faster integration and you don't want to worry about the user interface, we still have a solution for you, which is our widgets. 
our widgets leverage the WebEx native application user interface and can be embedded into your web application running on desktop. We currently offer two widgets. The first one is a recent widget, which allow you to load your spaces written in React. And the other one is a space widget, which also written in React and allow you to load a particular space in order to collaborate with uh, the space participants using messaging, meeting, screen sharing, and more. Now, let me show you how some of our partners and customers are using these SDKs and widgets in order to accomplish a desired use case. We have built a Salesforce integration by embedding recent and space widget into the CRM application of Salesforce. Using this integration, account managers, sales representative, and support are capable of now collaborating together on a particular Salesforce record, leveraging messaging, meeting, and uh, file transfer, and more. We have also instant connect by WebEx, especially during COVID times, the need for televisits is becoming higher. So now using this application powered by our web SDK, doctors and patients can virtually meet for medical consultations. Cloverhound Connect is also another interesting application. Cloverhound Connect application allows judges and workers seeking compensation to attend hearing together virtually. Judges can join them hearing using TESCO devices while workers can attend the same hearing user using Cloverhound Connect application running on desktop and mobile and powered by our web and iOS and Android SDKs. A very unique example is Expert on Demand. This is where our SDKs has been integrated to wearables. Expert on Demand, we have built for them an application on their smart glasses running Android operating system using our Android SDK, which allowed field technician to virtually meet with experts sitting in remotely in their offices in order to collaborate on how to resolve field problems in real time. Now, let me share, me share with you some exciting news about what we have released and also what's coming next. Four months ago, we have released our Android and iOS SDKs version 3.0, which allow our customers to do CUCM registration and calling, as well as allow us to do faster release of new features on these mobile SDKs. We have also released screen sharing support on Space Widget, which conclude the, the fundamental needed features for collaboration. We have also released the ability to receive meeting transcripts in real time on our web SDK. Now, this feature is really important for use cases as compliance, just-in-time knowledge discovery, as well as text analytics. Now let's move to what's coming soon. I have mentioned the importance of widget and how it can be integrated easily to your web-based application. For this reason, we are releasing soon a new widget called Meeting Widget, dedicated for you, for you to be able to join any WebEx meeting type. The new widget also will allow you to do the media device management, pre-meeting or mid-meeting, as well as you will be able to embed that to your uh, web application running on either mobile browsers or desktop browsers. On mobile SDKs, and since most of us are working remote, we need to provide the ability to change your background to a custom one during WebEx meetings, as well as blur your background during the same WebEx meeting. This feature is coming soon. Today, Cisco devices powered by WebEx Assistant allow users to say, to say voice commands, as OK WebEx start my meeting, which is going to start their meeting. To expand the functionality more, we have just released our new WebEx Assistant Skills SDKs to allow developers to extend the capabilities of WebEx Assistant on Cisco devices. Using the new SDKs, developers will be able to build the skill of their choice that achieve a desired functionality. With the launch of these SDKs, we have part three partners have released also their own skills. The first one is ServiceNow, which operates in IT service management. And using this skill, you will be able to say voice commands as, OK, WebEx, please open a new ServiceNow ticket. Also, another skill is for AppSpace, which is operating in digital signage and kiosk domain, which will allow you, if your organizations allow that, to get information regarding certain topics. So you will be able to say voice commands as, OK, OK, WebEx, please ask AppSpace to show me the latest health guidelines. Finally, the last skill is the lightware, which operates in the room controls field. And now you can 
control the lighting in your room as well as the blinds by saying voice commands as okay webex ask light where light where to lower my blinds let's look to uh, our demos today today let me demonstrate one of the recent release feature which is the ability to receive in, in real-time meetings transcripts using our web sdks as you can see on the screen, I'm using this sample application to join a WebEx meeting. And as you can see, the transcripts are flowing in this section using our low latency WebSocket connection that our Web SDK has established. Beside the transcripts itself, there are also metadata as a speaker identifier and timestamp of when the statement mentioned in the meeting. This transcription service does not only do speech to text conversion, but it also uses machine learning in order to make sure that whatever has been transcribed is revised in real time. And that is why you can see several versions of the same transcripts on the screen. This is to ensure the most possible accuracy. Here is a demo of our meetings widget, which is coming soon. I have just joined the meeting with my colleague and I'm able to uh, mute and mute my video and camera pre-meeting and also during the meeting. I'm also capable of showing the participant who have joined uh, this particular meeting, either if they are from the organization I'm from or from outside the organization. I'm able also to leverage a very nice and powerful feature as screen sharing. And I have just shared with you our GitHub repo, and I'm gonna show you how with few line of codes here, you are able uh, to integrate this new meetings widget into your web-based application, either on web or mobile. With that being said, I would like to hand it over to my colleague, Phil, again. Thank you, Omar. And fortunately, it's very easy for developers to get started right away. Let's take a look at how to begin your WebEx developer journey. The first place to go to start building WebEx applications is the WebEx for Developers portal, and that's located at developer.webex.com. There, you're gonna find great documentation, tutorials, code samples, and demos that span across all the WebEx APIs and SDKs. The WebEx API documentation on the portal is interactive by allowing you to make real API calls from a built-in REST client. So developers can test things out right from the docs. And the developer portal is also where you can obtain bot accounts, configure integrations, manage your deployments, and link up with our awesome developer support team. Many of the outcomes of the developer platform can be found in the WebEx App Hub, which is a site that enables anyone to share their integrations and bots with the rest of the WebEx community. You'll find a variety of applications there that span across different industry verticals and productivity partners. The WebEx App Hub is located at apphub.webex.com. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go check it out and try out some of the bots and integrations there. Chances are you're going to find a WebEx app for other services you already use. Here are some helpful links to some resources. Besides the WebEx developer portal, we have an official WebEx GitHub repository with even more code samples, templates, and libraries. Many other WebEx bot frameworks and samples found on our community curated repo on GitHub are maintained by our friends inside Cisco DevNet. Cisco DevNet also has some great learning labs for WebEx with step-by-step -step modules to walk you through the different aspects of building WebEx bots and integration applications. Please come build with us. Just scan this QR code to quickly navigate over to the WebEx developer portal. You can start using your existing WebEx login to get started or simply sign up for a new account right from the portal. And remember, we have a great support team you can engage with to help you along the way. We can't wait to see your new integrations on the WebEx App Hub, and thank you, and happy developing.